we've shown you again the code on fun that we've had. Load a new one more time. Here I wanted to show you the update. We're trying to find the confirmation, which means the way if this is up or down. Ruby, her arm is up holding the nitrogen on adenine. Adenine's gonna be flat, but this arm is going up. Backbone's going to the phosphates. This is the number two carbon, remember, oxygenated or not, RNA, DNA, but this, this is going up or down. Every structure has a different. We've got rhondoribose here. This is a good way, again, to look at the structure and just get a feel for how it is. Remember the vitamins. Well, here, carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, Oxygen is in the ring, carbon-5 off to the phosphate. So look how simple now, after we're looking at our other complex molecules like the vitamins, this is just five carbons, one oxygen's in the ring, one's either hanging off or not. These guys going to the phosphates are bound to oxygen, but that doesn't have to show in this. So you just got a carbon going up, carbon that's going to hold an alcohol, carbon that's going to hold nucleic acid. It's like everybody's got something to do. Who's the first one that's going to slack? That's what you do. Look at those carbons. Number two. It's like, I'm tired. I don't want to hold the OH anymore. What do you got now? Deoxyribonucleic acid. So, I mean, that's a good little way to think of it. There's five carbons in this ring. Who's going to give up first? He doesn't have anything to do. They're bound. That's holding the carbon. That's holding the ring together. This is holding the nucleic acid. Number two is like, hey, hold a little OH here. This, throw it off. That's all it takes to make deoxyribonucleic acid. Picture little Rhonda or Ruby or Ricky or Randy at number two saying, we're done. We're not holding that anymore. And Ricky, here's our dude. This is the dude. So this is my problem, dilemma again. When this complementary chain of DNA is going the opposite direction, they're showing this carbon, number four, remember, Four is going to the phosphate, so if this was four, it would have to be holding the phosphate, so this is number one holding the nucleic acid, but it's going down. He's upside down, that carbon's going down. The other structure has it going up. I'm trying to look into this, because I don't know if this is backwards. We know it's upside down, the ribose, but the nucleic acid it's looking like is actually the same way. If you notice this nitrogen is bound to the ribose, that's on the bottom. If the strand was going the way it was on the other side, this thing would be flipped. I've done this four different ways, and every time I get it and think I got it, it's wrong. So the best I can find now is that this is still upside down, but he's not backwards which ruins the whole back of their head thing that looked pretty cool, I thought. But something is not right in the drawings, and we will keep you posted. So what we're going to do now is take a break, because that's it for the illustrator art. And we're going to pull an old Ed Sullivan and bring in the animal axe.
Hey, I just wanted to show you quick here. This is another design. Just taking the periodic table. Oh. All you got to do, go with stuff you know. So I started lining up all the elements with the plus three ionization state. So it's all arranged. There's still columns because they're all lined up about the valence electrons on the outermost part. So these, boron with three, aluminum is underneath the three, scandium gallon. So I started lining them up. I took the third row down across the third series, yttrium. So I lined that up in the plus three. So you start finding ways of grouping these up and down just to make it look more colorful, make it look different, make it look like you can analyze it. And then you'll start noticing other things that may come into view. Indium I lined up with it. So this just makes it look, I think, different. Lines up elements in a different way. So you can start comparing. These are plus two ions. Magnesium, cal calcium are already underneath. But now I line the nickel, which is known to form a two ion. Strontium, which is in the same group as the calcium. See the color coding on those working here? Yeah. Palladium, barium. See the reds, when you get the original column, now you can see how they interject. Nickel, palladium. Well, anyway, the plus threes, though, this is what's neat. Scandium. Hmm? That was way over there. Gallium is in that group. But then the yttrium, indium is within that group over there, the traditional periodic table group. So let's go down a little and see what else is going on here. Oh, look, see, you got that whole group going across with the threes now. So this is cool, the plus three, you got them coming down. Then you got your lanthanide series. These all form plus three ions. What's down underneath that, you think? Oh, another row, huh? Well, what do you know? Actinium, Lorentium. Hmm. So let's skip this back a little. Take a bigger view of it. Oh, this is a PDF. That's why I was doing that. All the way back. See, now it's not all going to fit in there, is it? No, no, no. There, anyway, there's most of it. So this is what the form of just the plus three periodic table would look like. So it looks different, but it's practical. Now you can look and see plus threes. Plus threes across. These are still lining up with the way they react. So some guy I know that's supposed to be the world's leading authority and an expert, we all know what that means. Well, why is that there? Why is that there? I go, well, because when you put these here, they just happen to fall there. But I go by ionization, the electrons. This has nothing to do with the quantum mechanics of why you say an element is where it is in the box. I go by what the oxidation state, the ionization is, how it's going to react.